hello and welcome to today's lecture on in quest of higher ilp in the last lecture we have started our discussion on this topic and we have seen how we can achieve higher instruction level parallelism and we can have higher uh, i mean machine organization to facilitate that so in this lecture we shall continue on that uh, topic and before i proceed here are some important parameters i should uh, tell you number one is instruction pipeline cycle instruction pipeline cycle essentially tells you the cycle time that means uh, we have seen that the machine is controlled by a clock and whenever you do pipelining then the clock frequency increases and cycle time reduces so uh, this is the this is the instruction pipeline cycle uh, on the other hand it may take say let's assume a machine cycle may take four such clock cycles so in other words uh, if it requires four stages of pipeline then 1 2 3 4 so this will be your machine cycle rather the instruction cycle but pipeline cycle time clock cycle time will be this one so this this parameter you should remember second is instruction issue latency uh, instruction issue latency is uh, you are issuing instructions one uh, one after the other so the time required to issue an adjacent instruction after after a particular after a previous instruction that tells you the instruction issue lat latency that means you cannot issue all the instructions simultaneously so there will be a difference in time or latency in issuing instructions one after the other so that is defined as the instruction issue latency or uh, in abbreviated form il then instruction issue parallelism ip ip stands for you know the number of instructions that can be issued simultaneously concurrently that is actually known as the instruction issue parallelism and then the fourth fifth fourth parameter is simple operation lat latency that is the the processor will be performing operations instruction execution and that operation latency is the uh, essentially the time required uh, to perform the operation of a particular stage that is the operation latency uh, ol and then machine parallelism will tell you the number of instructions in flight simultaneously at a particular instant of time for example if you have got k stage pipeline then you will find that uh, at uh, when the pipeline is full there will be four uh, there, i mean if the, the if the case number of stages is co k then k instructions will be uh, in flight simultaneously uh, as the instructions get executed so this is the machine parallelism for a uh, simple pipeline processor it is equal to k we can start with you know whenever we go for uh, discussing higher and higher ilp you will see you will require a reference so initially when we discussed the pipeline processor our uh, reference was non pipeline processor and with respect to non line non pipe non pipeline processor we have discussed uh, various parameters like speed up throughput and so on now since we shall be concerned with increasing the uh, instruction level parallelism greater than 1 our reference point will be the baseline pipeline processor baseline pipeline processor which i have which i have discussed in my previous lectures processor or machine whatever you call it so this baseline pipeline baseline pipeline processor obviously uses temporal parallelism we have already seen 
and by doing that <coughs> it achieves instruction level parallelism and we have seen that for the baseline uh, uh, baseline pipeline processor which we also call scalar pipeline because it issues only one instruction at a time that is why since issue parallelism i p is equal to 1 uh, the uh, for the baseline uh, scalar risk processor uh, another thing we have added that is risk we are our discussion will be centered around only risk processor that is why uh, uh, this is being mentioned for the baseline scalar pipeline uh, risk processor the issue parallelism i p is equal to 1 and output latency is also one output latency is also one because you can see here it is generating output at the interval of one uh, one clock cycle so the output operation latency that is is equal to one and uh, the machine parallelism as i have already told uh, which is equal to k k means as you can see here at any particular instant of time since it has got four stages this particular pipeline processor maximum of four instructions will be simultaneously in flight during execution of course they may be in different stages of execution but uh, you know the uh, maximum number that can be present in the uh, in the in the processor i mean when they uh, when they are in, in the execu during execution is restricted to k where k is the uh, number of stages in the pipeline processor and uh, we have already seen that peak IPC, IPC is instruction per cycle, uh, it is just the opposite of CPI cycles per instruction and IPC uh, peak IPC is equal to 1. So, this we shall be used as our reference. So, uh, uh, there was a paper published by Joe P, uh, he classified various uh, ILP machine and this is the first classification where he classified the baseline scalar processor and these are the various parameters for that processor. Now, we have discussed that uh, scalar pipelines have got many restrictions and first one maximum throughput is bounded by one instruction per cycle. So, uh, IPC is less than one or CPI is greater than one. So, what is the solution to this? How we can achieve better performance? That means, uh, how we can achieve IPC greater than 1 or CPI less than 1? Obvious solution is uh, make the pipeline wider. So, make the pipeline wider, which is also known as superscalar. So, uh, by doing that, you can uh, increase your, uh, I mean you can uh, IPC can be instructions per cycle can be greater than 1 and uh, your CPI can be less than 1. <coughs> and we have seen that there are two paths in this direction. I have already mentioned it in the, in my last lecture. Uh, one is your VLI, VLIW, very large instruction word and in the last lecture we have discussed in detail how it really works and we have seen that the compiler has complete responsibility for selecting a set of instructions to be executed concurrently. So, the compiler identifies instructions which can be executed in parallel, then several instructions are uh, concurrently issued because the, uh, the uh, and this of course will require multiple functional units. Uh, present in the processor. <coughs> and for this VLIW processor, we have seen that the hardware requirement is simple because it does not require complex issue hardware. However, it requires a, uh, com a smart compiler or it will require what is known as optimizing compiler. That means, the compiler has to analyze the instructions uh, after fetching uh, from the memory, it has to analyze. Uh, they have to be kept they have to be kept in a buffer then uh, they will be analyzed to identify which instructions can be uh, issued in parallel and uh, that then they will they it will be uh, the compiler will bundle several instructions together and we have uh, already discussed this in detail in the last lecture 
and another alternative is superscalar processor that we shall discuss and uh, we have already uh, mentioned about VLSI. So, um, based on the classification done by Jopi, this VLIW has got issue parallelism that is m instructions per cycle. It can issue m instructions per cycle, obviously it will depend on uh, the machine parallel, the parallelism available in the program, although maximum possible is m as you can see in this you cannot really uh, fill up all the fields and as a result the uh, actual actual uh, I mean par parallelism that is possible will be less than m. So, here also the operation latency is equal to one cycle because as you can see here uh, the uh, after one cycle uh, uh, the, the here uh, the uh, outputs are generated after one cycle here also. So, the issue parallelism is m instructions per cycle of course, m is the maximum value and operation latency is equal to 1 and machine parallelism is equal to m into k, m into k because m is the uh, number of uh, instructions that can be issued in parallel and you can see if all the fields are filled up, then you can see simultaneously you can have m into k, m into k means you can see uh, here the, the, the pipeline depth is 4. So, 4 into 3 uh, uh, in this particular case you can have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 into 4, 16. There is a possibility of 16 instructions uh, getting executed in parallel, that means instructions may be in flight. So, uh, that is why uh, the machine parallelism is equal to m into k. <coughs> and uh, peak IPC uh, instruction level parallelism that is possible is m instructions per cycle or one, I, one VLIW instruction per cycle. So, one VLIW instruction will comprise m instructions here m is the number of fields present in the uh, machine. Of and we have uh, seen that this VLIW processors have got some drawbacks. Number one is it has got large number of resistors needed in order to keep the functional units active to and these functional units are needed to store operand, uh, to store results and uh, whenever you fill uh, I mean um, say we pick up four instructions to be executed in parallel obviously, you will require large number of resistors present in the processor. Uh, so, this is one uh, drawback unless the processor has got large number of resistors it is not feasible then large data transport capacity is needed between functional units and the register file and between the register file and the memory. So, you can see your instruction is, uh, uh, is quite long that has to be fetched from the memory. Then uh, though those uh, those uh, that by particular instructions will be loaded in the instruction register and then instruction register will uh, give i mean will uh, will uh, put in, will uh, apply the input to the execution unit which has to fetch the operands from the register so you have to fetch the operands from large number of registers because you have to feed them to uh, several functional units simultaneously so, and so between functional units and the register file and between register files and memory. So, this is the uh, large data transport capacity or bandwidth is required and third is high bandwidth between instruction cache and fetch cache. So, uh, you know uh, you have your program stored in the as you know nowadays all processors use cache memory to store the uh, program though. So, the, so, instruction programs are stored in the instruction cache and data is stored in the data cache. Later on we shall discuss in detail about the cache memory and uh, obviously, you will require high bandwidth between instruction cache and fetch cache. And why it is required? Because one instruction with five operations in a particular instruction and each of 32 bits will require 160 bits per instructions. So, this example shows why you require high bandwidth between instruction cache and cache and the fetch unit. Okay. Uh, so, there are other drawbacks large code size partially because of unused operations and wasted bits in the instruction volume. 
So, we have seen although we have used a large uh, uh, instruction word, but a large number of fields are unused. So, primary because of this uh, you know you have got uh, large code size uh, partially because of unused operations and wasted bits in instruction word. So, although uh, it is there, but uh, a significant portion is wasted. Another very important aspect is incompatibility of binary code. You know whenever a, a, a next generation processor is introduced, it is expected that it will be backward compatible with the uh, next processor, new generation of processor. That means, uh, uh, we have seen that uh, the you can execute uh, 80386 program in a 80386 uh, machine or a 80486 program can be executed in a Pentium. But in this particular case, there is a problem. Problem is arising because, for example, if for a new version of the processor additional functions are introduced then the number of operations possible to execute in parallel is increased. For example, earlier you were having say 4 functional units and obviously, your processor that uh, ILAW uh, uh, that VLIW instruction was having 4 fields, this was your instruction. Now, a new generation th this is the old machine and suppose you have introduced a, a new machine has been introduced where you have got five functional units. So, the instruction will be will change. So, it will be like this and as a consequence the program written for this machine cannot be executed in this new machine. So, backward compatibility is lost. So, this is the uh, this is referred to as incompatibility of binary code. So, because of these limitations VLIW processors although uh, I have discussed uh, uh, in detail for the sake of completeness and commercial processors have been uh, um, have been Im implemented commercially because VLIW processors have been implemented for example, transmitter as Crusoe processors because of uh, you know low power and but you know they are not very commercially successful. So, commercially successful processors are uh, superscalar. But before I discuss superscalar and various variations of superscalar, let me dis touch upon one important aspect that is your limits on ILP. You know all our uh, processors that we shall be discussing is will heavily rely on the instruction level parallelism that is available. Now, if the instruction level parallelism that is present is small, then obviously, there is no uh, gain or uh, gain in having uh, in implementing a processor with large with having say large instruction field or a processor which can issue large instructions simultaneously. So, uh, lot of simulation studies have been carried out by many researchers to identify the limits on instruction level parallelism. And there are two extreme observations number one which was uh, by Flyan, Flyan's uh, that is known as Flyan's bottleneck and here it says that instruction level parallelism available in the basic block is always less than 2. It is 1.8, 1.87, 1.96, so it is less than 2 and that means if you do not do specialized uh, operations like loop unrolling. Uh, software pipelining which I have discussed. Then if you simply restrict to the, uh, the, uh, the basic block as it is present in a program, then the instruction level parallelism that is available is only 2. However, contradictory results were uh, published by other uh, researchers. For example, Fisher along with his colleagues published a paper in uh, back in 1984 where he said that the instruction level parallelism available is 90. So, there is a big gap between 2 and 90 and what he did actually he identified some programs where you can you know uh, essentially numeric uh, processing is involved 
and there he found that uh, the uh, the uh, the instruction level parallelism available is 90 and in fact later on uh, this this was referred to as fisher's optimism so you can see there is pessimistic uh, view about the instruction level parallelism available that means it is 2 of 2 on the other hand there is a uh, optimistic view which says that instruction level parallelism is much larger subsequent researchers uh, have confirmed that this 90 is really too big, but definitely more than 2 instruction level parallelism is possible. So, uh, 3, 5.8, 6, 7. So, these are the different type, different instruction level parallelisms which are available and obviously, uh, people will be uh, interested in exploiting the instruction level parallelism that is available in programs and uh, for that if necessary special techniques like software uh, loop unrolling, uh, software pipelining, uh, those techniques are to be incorporated to increase the instruction level parallelism. So, with this background let us discuss the motivation for superscalar processor, why superscalar processor is, uh, pro is, uh, uh, is uh, pro uh, proposed or required. You can see here. Uh, here the vectorizability, vectorizability of a program that means a particular program which can be vectorized, Vector, vectorizability means parallelism. So, you can see vectorizability uh, it varies from say may be 0 0.8 to 0 0.4 to 0.8 and uh, this is the typical range. Now, suppose you have got two processors, one processor is uh, where uh, n is equal to 1. I mean uh, n is the number of stages in this particular case it has been n is the number of stages. Now, uh, n is the number of stages and you have got a simple pipeline processor obviously, speed up uh, will vary depending on the vectorizability or uh, parallelism available in the program. So, you can see depending on the parallelism available the speed up will vary. Uh, if n is equal to 4, if you have got 4 stages maximum value is 4, maximum value is 4 and this will drop sharply as the, uh, the, the, the vectorizability parameter uh, decreases. Similarly, for uh, say for n is equal to 6 that is a uh, n is the number of stages, the maximum possible speed up is 6 as we know and this also drops uh, rapidly as the uh, as the, vector, the um, vectorizability or that, that is it may be called as instruction level parallelism that parallelism that is present that decreases. So, uh, but if we go for say uh, superscalar processor by superscalar processor mean the processor can issue more than one instruction simultaneously. So, this is the curve correspond this is the corresponding curve. So, in this curve as you can see speed up uh, even uh, is the minimum speed up is 2 that is possible and maximum speed up can be 12 with uh, number of stages in the pipeline equal to 6. So, for the same number of stages if we increase the uh, number of issue from 1 to 2 as you can see here. The this is because this this point corresponding to number for say uh, ILP or uh, uh, vectorizability is equal to 0 0.8, we get uh, 3 speed up we get 3 for conventional pipeline without any uh, uh, parallelism I mean uh, more than one instruction issued. Now, you can see here as the as you increase the uh, if you increase the uh, number of issue to 2, the, uh, the speed up jumps from 3 to 4.3 for n is equal to 6, n is the number of stages and f is equal to 0.8 that is parallelism, but m is equal to 2, m is equal to 2 that means number of instructions that has been issued is equal to 2 instead of m is equal to 1, m is equal to 1 correspond to that scalar pipeline processor. So, this, this simple observation tells you that uh, uh, it is 
essential to go for superscalar processor to achieve higher speed up and uh, higher speed up means higher performance. So, superscalar processors uh, you can have statically scheduled superscalar processor that is one version and later on we shall discuss about the dynamically scheduled instruction processor. So, in case of statically scheduled superscalar processor you can have multiple issue in order execution and later on we shall discuss about dynamically scheduled processor where you will see out of order execution is possible. So, this is the superscalar processor proposal where you will try to go beyond simple instruction pipeline to achieve instructions per cycle greater than 1, dispatch multiple instructions per cycle. That means, the you will issue the processor whenever it is executed, I mean executing a program, it will, uh, it will issue more than one instructions and uh, it may be 2, it may be 3, it may be 4. So, it will dispatch multiple instructions per cycle and provide more generally applicable form of concurrency. You see, uh, vector processing, vectorization or vector processing is a kind of parallelism, where you know whenever you are executing in a loop, different iterations are independent. So, uh, since different iterations are independent, in a vector processor all different iterations can be executed simultaneously. That is the, that is one kind of parallelism, but that kind of parallelism is present only when you, 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 the program involves vector processing, but conventional uh, programs may not be may not always contain uh, ve uh, vectorizability or uh, processing of vectors. So, in such a case how to provide uh, you know concurrency that is what is being done in superscalar processor. So, it is geared for sequential code that is hard to parallelize otherwise and obviously, it will exploit, exploit fine grain on instruction level parallelism that is your superscalar processor and how is it done is shown with the help of this diagram. Here you have got uh, we are uh, utilizing spatial parallelism you know in case of conventional uh, pipelining we have seen we tried to use temporal parallelism. So, instructions were issued. Uh, one after the other in time at the interval of one clock cycle. But here what is being done several instructions are simultaneously issued. So, issue parallelism is m instructions per cycle. So, this is the parallelism that is present in a superscalar processor. So, three instructions are issued here in the next cycles another three instructions are issued in the next cycle another three instructions are issued. And uh, operation latency of course, it, uh, it remains one cycle as you can see the first result is coming out after k cycles, k is the depth of the pipeline and then after one cycle you get another uh, result. So, uh, operation latency is one cycle in this case also and machine parallelism is, is equal to m into k, m into k as I have already told you can have uh, the total number of instructions in flight simultaneously is m into k and the peak IPC, peak uh, number of instructions per cycle that you can achieve is m instructions per cycle. So, that speed up you know uh, this is the ideal case m instructions per cycle, but uh, obviously the speed up factor will be uh, uh, less than 1 because there will be some stalls. So, here when there is no stall, when there is no uh, dependency the instructions can be uh, issued uh, uh, in parallel depending on the parallelism available in the processor, then we get an ideal speed up that is equal to m, high m into k. However, uh, uh, we cannot uh, re really do that in uh, real life practical programs where there will be dependencies and as a consequence there will be stalls. So, in this particular diagram does not show any stall. So, uh, that speed up factor will be less than 1. So, m into uh, point something. So, that will be the value that we will get. So, peak IPC will be in, in practice will be less than m. <coughs> Now, based on this, uh, 
uh, supercalar processors have been introduced commercially and uh, so commercial desktop processors now do four or more issues per clock and even in the embedded processors market dual issue supercalar pipelines are becoming common so uh, uh, we have already seen that minimum instruction level parallelism that is present is two even without doing you know uh, loop unrolling and other sophisticated things in the basic block of a program that instruction level parallelism available is two. So, uh, super, uh, super scalar processor with uh, uh, issue rate of two uh, is quite common and then of course, you can go for go beyond two, four or more. Here is some example. So, here two processors are shown, the first one A, this corresponds to the five stage i486 that is your Intel 486 processor where no uh, parallelism I mean uh, super scalar technique was introduced, but it is a simple scalar pipeline with uh, five stages instruction phase, uh, decode stage 1, decode stage 2, decoding was uh, complex. The reason for that was you know uh, these processors use complex instructions. So, since they use complex instructions, decoding is little complicated that is why uh, decoder stage was divided into two stages, decoder stage 1 and decoder stage 2, then there is an execution stage and write back or operate and row. That was the 486 processor pipeline. So, it is a scalar pipeline. Now, uh, when uh, Pentium was introduced, Pentium uh, uh, was having a parallel pipeline width of 2. So, it is a super scalar processor width of degree 2. So, as you can see here, uh, it will fetch 2 instructions, decode 2 instructions, then issue 2 instructions uh, because it has got uh, 2 pipes U pipe and V pipe, 2 separate pipelines through which 2 instructions can be issued and will get executed in parallel. So, uh, uh, the D, D2, you have got two separate stages, execution and write back. So, this is the uh, super scalar processor first introduced in Pentium. Now, let us focus on the performance that you can achieve uh, whenever you go for super scalar uh, execution. We have seen that K stage baseline pipeline processor will require n tasks and uh, it will require k plus n minus 1 clock cycles. Now, let us see what is the time required to execute the same program ideally, obviously we shall go for the ideal one k, k stage m issue super scalar processor. So, here you have got <coughs> say uh, let us assume there are 4 stages in the pipeline. and 3 instructions are issued simultaneously. So, 3 instructions are issued simultaneously, then in the next cycle another 3 instructions are issued in the next cycle another 3 instructions are issued in this way it continues. So, uh, this is the super scalar processor of degree 3. So, in this case what is the time required to execute n instructions? So, in a for, for the sake of generality, generality we shall consider it that it has a degree of m, but in this example it is a uh, so degree shown is 3. Now, as you can see here the uh, after k clock cycles, k is the number of stages, it will uh, result for 3 instructions will be available. Then in the subsequent clock cycles as you can see uh, each time you will get result from 3 instructions. So, here the first 3 instructions will require k clock cycles, then 
you are left with n minus n minus m instructions. So, n minus m instructions will be uh, results will be produced in uh, n minus m by uh, three instructions are three instructions res, uh, results of three instructions are produced per cycle. So, this by three. So, this is the sorry let me put m in general. So, this is the time required uh, k plus n minus m by m. So, this is the number of you can say T m 1 for the superscalar processor. Now, what is the speed up? What is the speed up of this processor with respect to uh, our baseline processor? For our baseline processor, we have seen the baseline that is your baseline pipeline uh, processor, the time required was k plus n minus 1 that was the time required. And on this case in this uh, for uh, for the superscalar processor of degree gen time required is k plus n minus m by m. So, speed up <coughs> speed up is equal to t 1 comma 1 by t m comma 1. So, that means, you have to divide this by this and you will get this equal to m into k plus n minus 1 by this factor n minus plus n plus m into k uh, k minus 1. So, this is the speed up they will get uh, in case of your uh, superscalar processor. So, this is uh, S M M M 1 uh, this is shown here. Now, uh, whenever you are executing large number of instructions then n is infinity for n is equal to infinity this is speed up limit S M comma 1 that becomes is equal to M. We have seen in case of your uh, normal processor normal processor mean pipeline processor we are considering pipeline processor the speed up was k with respect to non pipeline. Now, in this particular case speed up is m with respect to the baseline uh, pipeline processor. So, if we consider the speed up with respect to the with, with respect to the uh, with respect to the original non pipeline processor the speed up will be equal to maximum speed up with respect to the non pipeline processor will be m into k or machine parallelism is m into m into k okay. as expected uh, with respect to the baseline pipeline processor the speed up is m. Now, uh, here is some comparison between the VLIW and superscalar processor. We have seen that VLIW uh, in case of VLIW compi compiler finds the parallelism, in superscalar hardware finds the parallelism. So, VLIW simple hardware, super superscalar will require more complex hardware and, and but one important point that you should notice here is that VLIW has less parallelism because it can exploit less parallelism because you know that uh, parallelism is exploit is extracted with the help of a uh, program or compiler. And compiler cannot identify all the parallelism that is present in the program at compile time. On the other hand since it is done by hardware by the superscalar processor at run time it can identify more parallelism instruction level parallelism. As a result superscalar gives you better performance. So, ideally you know we have seen for both the cases speed up is m, but in case of VLIW lesser number of fields of the VLIW instruction will be filled up. On the other hand in case of super superscalar processor more number of instructions will be executed in parallel 
because the parallelism is extracted with the help of a hardware. So, uh, superscalar will give you better performance. Now, let us look at the superscalar organization. Machine cycle time is shorter uh, than the baseline processor, the cycle time is okay. Another variation that is super pipeline. We have discussed about simple pipeline or scalar pipeline. We have discussed about VLIW, we have discussed about superscalar. Now, we are considering another very, uh, I mean another extension that is known as super pipeline. What is the basic idea behind, behind the super pipeline processor? It has been observed that we have seen that the different stages of a pipeline processor do not take, are not uniform because you know we are trying to combine different types of instructions which are not uh, same. So, uh, as, a, as a consequence there is a possibility to further divide a particular stage of a pipeline. For example, uh, suppose originally a processor was having say four stages. Now, each stage this is the basic uh, number of stages. Now, this is further divided each stage is further divided into two sub stages. So, you can say you have got a major cycle as defined by the pipeline, now you have got minus cycle. So, in each cycle uh, some minus cycles are introduced. What is the advantage that is that you get? Advantage is now as if the number of stages increase. So, you have introduced n minor cycles. And uh, as you introduce m minor cycles, the clock frequency, uh, the cycle time is now becomes 1 by n of the baseline processor. So, in this particular case, I have shown uh, n is equal to 2. So, the clock frequency doubles uh, or the cycle times is 1 by n, cycle time is reduced. So, this is uh, 1 by 2 of this. Now, uh, what benefit do we get out of it? Benefit is now another instruction is issued after a minor cycle. So, instead of waiting for the major cycle, instructions are issued after a minor cycle. So, as a consequence, although the initial delay is same as the pipeline processor that means it will again take k clocks k k clock cycles or k into uh, n uh, you know uh, that clock cycles in terms of this super pipeline processor but subsequently you will get result at the interval of 1 by n of the uh, cycle time of the basic pipeline processor so your throughput will increase and it has been found that uh, your m, I mean whenever you have got superscalar processor of degree m and super pipeline processor of degree n, when m and n are equal, you get more or less same, uh, same uh, performance. But what is the difference between the two? Difference between the two is in the in this particular case, you can see the the number of I mean the clock frequency is increasing, cycle time is getting reduced and uh, the processor has to run at a faster with a faster clock. So, here it has to run at a faster clock and however, 
the number of uh, you know that number of uh, uh, the number of uh, instructions that will be ex the if you consider the throughput it will although it is same but the clock frequency is increasing so it is characterized by output latency of one cycle that is n minus cycles and il is equal to 1 minus cycle and ip is equal to 1 instruction one instruction per minus cycles or we can say n instructions per cycle so here the machine parallelism is again uh, is equal to n into k and in case of superscalar processor we have seen it is equal to m into k when m and m and n are same the parallelism that is available for both the machines is identical so it is not different but you are achieving the same performance using a different approach altogether different approach and it may be considered as a deeply pipeline processor with n into k stages so if you want to uh, say in simple terms you may say that again it is nothing but a pipeline processor only thing that the number of stage has been increased earlier it was having k stage now it is now uh, it is having k into m stages but uh, the although this statement is correct but in practice there is some difference what is the difference difference is we have seen whenever we go for forwarding in whenever we go for forwarding results from the pipe the buffers are applied to the functional unit that means uh, your from this from uh, output of this uh, output from here is fed is taken output from here is is taken output from here is taken and output from i mean from these intermediate stages are taken but not you cannot take from the minus cycles that means the uh, output from the at in the output uh, available that is available from the minus cycles are not accessible are not available so that means whenever you go for implementing forwarding which is necessary to overcome data hazards as we have seen by hardware means there you will feel the difference there you cannot consider it as a pipeline with uh, m into k stages there you will consider it as if it is a pipeline with k stages so there lies the difference so uh, outputs of some stages cannot be accessed for forwarding which is available for minus cycles and uh, some super pipeline processors have been designed one is cdc 6600 that was designed cray 1 was also super pipeline and uh, mips r4000 is also a super pipeline processor which has got eight stage pipeline with two minus cycles for example uh, two minus cycles per basic uh, cycle so it has got instruction fetch uh, uh, that is the first uh, stage and instruction fetch second is stands for instruction fetch second so you can see instruction fetch is now divided into two stages then uh, the second stage uh, that uh, you know that instruction decode and register read uh, the execution stage is again divided into two two stages register fetch and execution then uh, that uh, then data fetch and data data second that is uh, this this stage is also divided uh, into uh, two stages similarly the uh, the uh, that write back stage that is also divided the tc stands for tag tag check you know that you are reading from the uh, cache memory so uh, name has been tag check so you can see the it is it has got four, four it is, you can consider it as a eight stage pipeline however uh, here it has got uh, two minus cycles in its stage so this is an example of super pipeline organization so according to the classification of uh, jopi uh, this is the super pipeline processor where cycle time is 1 by n of the baseline processor issue parallelism is one instruction per minus cycle so you can see this, uh, you are issuing one instruction per minus cycle output lesson, lesson, uh, latency is uh, m minus cycle so you can see after m minus uh, you are introducing output is generated after m minus cycles and peak ipc is 
n instructions per major cycle. So, n into speed up. So, here you can achieve as I have said machine parallelism you can achieve is n into k. So, uh, in a similar way you can find out the performance of the super pipeline processor and time required is uh, you can say t 1 n is equal to k plus n minus 1 per n. So, you can consider it as a pipeline processor and uh, in that way you can find out and the speed up is equal to uh, t 1 1 that is the baseline pipeline processor by t 1 n that is the super pipeline processor we get k plus n minus 1 by k plus n minus 1 by n. Uh, so, this is the speed up that we get n into k plus n minus 1 by n k plus n minus 1. <coughs> and uh, whenever n is very large then you get uh, S 1 n is equal to n as expected that means, with, refer with respect to the base pipeline processor we get a speed up of n. However, whenever we consider the speed up with, with respect to non pipeline processor we shall get a speed up of n into k. So, here always we are considering with respect to the pipeline processor that is why the speed up limit is n, but that is again the ideal situation. Now, we can extend the idea further and we can have super pipeline super, uh, super scalar organization that means, we can combine super scalar along with super pipeline and processors commercial processors are available for that and here the processor executes m instructions every cycle with a pipeline uh, cycle 1 by n of the baseline processor and it is characterized by o n is equal to 1 cycles is equal to m minus cycles or i l is equal to 1 minus cycle and i p is equal to 1 instructions per minus cycle or n instructions per cycle and here machine parallelism is equal to n into k. Uh, no, it will be n into m into k I believe. So, here uh, it is wrong machine parallelism will be n into m into k because uh, it is you can see here the number of instructions which, which are uh, uh, number of instructions in flight during execution will be equal to n into m into k. So, machine parallelism will be m into n into k. So, this we should modify. So, the execution of instructions for a uh, super pipeline super scalar processor of degree 3 comma 3 is shown here. So, 3 instructions are issued and after each uh, minus cycle another 3 instruction is issued. So, after uh, 3 minus cycle another 3 instruction is issued. So, this this is how instruction issue is taking place and execution is taking place. This is the ideal situation. <coughs> so, according to the classification by JOP again uh, IP is equal to m instructions for minus cycles, OP is equal to n minus cycles and IPC is equal to m into n instructions for major cycle. So, this is the performance of super pipeline super scalar with degree uh, n. Here T m n time required to execute n instructions will be equal to k plus n minus m by m n. So, you see you are dividing it by a factor of uh, the first uh, n instruction first uh, k instructions will I mean first uh, m instructions will take k cycles and after that the remaining n minus m instructions will require uh, n by m by m n uh, cycles. So, based on that you get a speed up which is equal to uh, a, uh, which is equal to uh, which will be uh, this is this will be equal to S m n uh, S m n is equal to n m into k plus n minus 1 by n m k plus n minus m. So, uh, speed up limit in this case is m n as expected. Now, uh, we can uh, we have seen that uh, inefficient unification of instructions lead to some problem because we try to execute to combine different types of pipelines which are not identical. So, ALU operation memory operation. So, instead of that we can go for diversified specialized pipelines as it is shown here uh, ALU through one pipeline memory operation through another pipeline floating point through another pipeline 
instead of trying to combine different types of instruction in a single pipeline, we can have separate diversified pipeline for different stages and along with that we can combine super pipeline, super scalar execution. And another limitation that we have seen that is because of rigid nature of in order pipeline. So, this problem can be overcome by having out of order execution and distributed execution pipeline as you can see here. However, this will require uh, dispatch buffer that means, you will require some buffer where the instructions will be temporarily stored. So, multiple entry uh, uh, buffer will be required. For example, in this case this dispatch buffer through which you will be storing several instructions, uh, multiple instructions and then will the, the order in which the instruction cell will be that will be shoot from dispatch buffer uh, may not be same as the program order. That means, that this from the dispatch buffer instructions will be issued out of order. So, whenever the instructions are issued out of order, there is a possibility that the instruction the instruction will be executed also out of order. So, out of order execution will take place and results will be stored in another buffer known as reorder buffer. So, the reorder buffer the order in which the uh, results are stored in the reorder buffer you know ultimately you have to convert them uh, in order uh, the way it is available in your in, in your program order. So, from this reorder buffer the outputs are generated as it is as it comes out from the uh, program order. So, then the writing in the processors is required. So, the processor design superscalar processor design will involve uh, different functional units fetch, decode, dispatch, execute, complete, retire. Along with that you will require different types of buffers instruction buffer, dispatch buffer, issuing buffer, completion buffer, store buffer and uh, uh, these designs will be uh, we shall in my subsequent lectures. I shall discuss about the design of superscalar processor involving this type of buffers and functional units, diversified functional units in my next two lectures. Thank you.